Okay, so this is a mini lecture on a good man's hard to find. I'm just gonna kind of hit on some key points here. Uh, I'll also be posting a video about good country people. Uh, and for both of these, um, I'll post the text edition. The good, uh, good country people is in a PowerPoint, so I'll just post the PowerPoint without the video also, so you can refer to those easily. So I'm going to focus in this story for a good country or a good man's hard to find. I'm going to fo mostly focus on the end of the story. Uh, of course, the rest of the story is very important because it um, really sets up the character of the uh, grandmother and her traits or characteristics before she meets the uh, misfit. So here's some of the grandmother's more enduring traits. And this is a thing I always do in a traditional classroom. It's the first thing I do with this story is ask the students to just kind of list off all the uh, qualities that, uh, that the grandmother has or these traits or things that she does. And so what I've tried to do here is just kind of give you a representative list of usually what shows up, that she's selfish, she's a liar, she's racist, she's manipulative, she's arrogant, self-righteous, annoying, she's a hypocrite. And, and I think that uh, as you read through the story, you see all of these things kind of emerge even at the end it becomes pretty clear that, um, you know, the grandmother probably is in need of a, finding a, a good man. And this plays also into that idea of grace. You know, these are, you know, many of her qualities. And with the misfit, she sort of comes face to face with this. And then she finds her moment of grace that we'll talk about later. So uh, your, de your discussion board responses on this story were really good. Very detailed. I was quite impressed. As many of you noted, uh, after reading some of the supplementary O'Connor documents, which I think really helped, she feels that violence is justified and in some cases necessary to lead her character to his or her moment of grace. So the family, a lot of students kind of really wonder about, well, why did that whole family need to die in this story? And um, I say, well, kind of recall some of O'Connor's about violence and grace. So, but, um, one answer is that death has accomplished two things. It shows the misfits a psychopath, very damaged man and, um, uh, and a conflicted man. And it also shows or reinforces the character of flaws possessed and demonstrated by the grandmother. She appears more concerned for her own life than her family's. She's very self-centered. Now, look, you know, I mean, it's horrible to kill a whole family in the woods, but O'Connor really doesn't want you to get really attached to those. So that's why those characters aren't developed very well. And even they're not the greatest people in the world. Bailey's a mama's boy. The kids are obnoxious. Uh, the mom is just kind of a zero. There's really nothing going on with her. So, you know, it's, it's you know, I guess in a sense tragic, but, you know, it's a story. But it also kind of is, is how, how O'Connor uses violence in this story. And this is her most violent story, by the way. This is the one that shows up in all the, the, uh, the books for literature classes. Um, but... You know, she needs that to really, because she uses that also when, when the grandmother's encountering <clears throat> the misfit, that she really is more concerned about saving her own behind than uh, her family's, okay? So the misfit and the grandmother. Well, the misfit's definitely a bad man. He feels he's been treated unfairly. He says even this, the punishment never seemed to fit the crime. He has a lack of faith, which we'll talk more about later. And he, well, he wishes he had faith. So in the story, he says, if I, <clears throat> if I ain't right, that's about, they're talking about whether there's a, you know, God or Jesus or not. And he kind of believes not. It ain't right that I wasn't there because I, if I had been there, I'd have known of, I would have known. He would have known if he could, some, that's kind of the issue with faith. You have to believe in things that you don't really can see <clears throat> or hadn't really experienced face to face. So and he said in a high voice, if I had been there, I would have known and I wouldn't be like I am now. So he's saying, and, and in the story, he talks about his dad a little bit. And his dad, he had some brothers and sisters. And he said that there's some that can just accept things and some that just can't accept it uh, without finding out. And he even says this, his dad said that's what he's like. Now, here's kind of an idea. Misfit is a savior. Is uh, the misfit the grandmother's savior? I would think in O'Connor world, one would say yes, okay? This experience leads the grandmother to her moment of self-realization, her moment of grace, okay? So how's this her moment of grace? She says, right before she gets shot, she says, well, you're one of my babies. You're one of my own children. 
And so, you know, we're talking about grace and we're talking about religion. Uh, so the grandmother really did the, uh, essentially the most Christ-like thing she could do. And, you know, um, you know, forgiveness is, is central to Christianity. Without forgiveness, Christianity doesn't really make much sense. So she forgave the misfit for not only killing her family, but for killing her. She reached out to him and said, you're one of my children, just like, uh, let's see, what did I learn in Sunday school? I think when Jesus was dying on the cross, he said something like, forgive them for they know not what they do. That is the ultimate forgiveness, okay? So this is her ultimate moment of grace. And I did learn that in Sunday school that every Christian's ultimate goal is to live your life in the most Christ-like way manner, the most Christ-like way as possible. At least that's what I learned, okay? So there's nothing more Christ-like than forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, which is what the grandmother did. And then it is, you know, we go back to that extreme situation idea that I had to talk about in the uh, discussion boards. I, I can't think of much more extreme than, uh, you know, being caught out in the woods by a psychopath who kills your whole family and then definitely going to kill you. Now think about the grandmother. I mean, she's, you know, if you want to, if you wanted to really, blame somebody. I mean, you could blame the, the misfit, but if you look at all the things that grandmother did leading up to this, she lied, she brought her cat, she realized they were going the wrong direction when she was going back to this house she wanted to see and didn't say anything about it. She just kept her mouth shut. Um, she manipulated the kids into getting Bailey to take them on this little side trip. And then she she, when they run into the misfit, was the first thing she does is she recognizes them and says she recognizes them. And the misfit says, well, you know, ma'am, you should not have done that or recognized this because then he has no choice. Okay. So, uh, you know, the grandmother here is a real piece of work. Uh, and I'm not saying she's an awful person. I think she's probably just as flawed as the rest of us. But uh, in this situation, you know, ultimately it's all her actions, all these shortcomings that we kind of listed that kind of get him in trouble. So, but now she achieves her grace. And one kind of idea about grace is, and it's not the main idea, but it's an idea about it is, you know, maybe when you hit that moment of grace, if you're going to die, this would be a good time because it probably is not going to get much better for you. So, uh, and um, if you go back to, um, and I'll come back to this again, but I'm going to scroll back up here for a second. When the misfit says at the end of the story, she would have been a good woman if it had been somebody there to shoot her every minute of her life. What the misfit realizes is, is that um, this action that he took is the thing that probably sent her to heaven. He recognized that she had probably actually kind of hit that kind of pinnacle or that, that, that um, most Christ-like kind of action. Okay. So um, here's some random thoughts about this. So, one of the elements of fiction that I don't really talk about much is called foreshadowing, but it also kind of leads to irony. Foreshadowing means is we kind of get hints about what's going to happen as the story uh, moves along. So, uh, and one of the big kind of examples of this is if any, when the grandmother says, if anything happens to me on this trip, at least people will know I'm a lady. Okay. I think I paraphrased that a little bit, but she said something like that. So, um, we see how she views herself, but it's also ironic because it foreshadows, gives a hint of what will happen later in the story. Something definitely happens, okay? And you keep in mind that probably in this story, um, the words lady and good are interchangeable, uh, or at least they're in the, the grandmother's mind. They kind of mean the same thing. Now, I'm just going to kind of throw this one out here just for the fun of it. I, I don't think this is a hyper-symbolic kind of a story but there's some things in it but uh this one's kind of fun some argue that uh when the uh misfit shoots the grandmother at the end he shoots her three times bang 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 uh i have read some things where uh scholars argue that it's symbolic of the holy trinity the father son and holy ghost it kind of makes sense in the way o'connor sees the world I, I'm not sure that should be a nod in there, how convinced I am, but it's at least an interesting idea. And sometimes when we talk about literature, sometimes there are just things or interesting ideas to kind of play with, okay? Now, is it possible that the misfit achieves some kind of grace? 
I've got two passages in here that I want to talk about, and then I think we're close to being done. So there's two passages below that, that I think suggest that maybe the misfit had some kind of an awakening or moment of grace. Uh, keep in mind that the misfit, if you go back and read that kind of last two or three pages when the misfit and the grandmother are together, you'll notice he's getting real emotional and, and getting really kind of tense and, and intense and, and frustrated and get very, very thoughtful and reflective. So something, something that, that's going on here is kind of getting to him a little bit. Okay, so so I wonder. In in, in this passage, uh, he talks about Jesus and faith. Okay, and it kind of goes back to what I was talking about. What the dad said about the misfit. Okay, so Jesus was the only one that ever raised the dead. The misfit continued, and he shouldn't have done it. He's shown everything off balance. If he did what he said, then it's nothing for you but to throw away everything and follow him. So what he's saying here is is if you believe all of this stuff, you're better off just to believe in Jesus, follow what he says, do what he says to do. And, and when you die, you go to heaven. And that's kind of the ultimate goal, right? And it's not like he doesn't have a point there because he kind of does. But then he says, and if he didn't, then it's nothing for you to do, but enjoy the few minutes you got left the best way you can by killing somebody or burning down his house or some other meanness to him. Now I want to kind of talk about this highlighted part here. Okay. No pleasure, but meanness, he said, and his voice had become almost a snarl. Okay, so we're going to come back to that because he says just the opposite thing at the end of the story. So the, the misfit doesn't have faith because he can't believe in Jesus because he sees no proof. He talks about the idea with the grandmother and, uh, you know, so uh, she shouldn't worry about dying because she'll go to heaven. If she doesn't, well, it doesn't really matter anyway if there's nothing after this. So now. If you compare that highlighted part above with the line below that's highlighted, the misfit says, that, and this is what he says after he kills the grandmother. It's the last line of the story. It kind of contradicts that highlighted part of the passage above. This is the very last lines of the story. Shut up, Bobby Lee, the misfit said. It's no real pleasure in life. So if you go back up here and compare, uh, there's no pleasure but meanness. Well, he's just done about the darn meanest thing anybody could ever do, kill his whole family and the grandmother. And after he gets done with all that, and this is when he tells the, you know, after he tells the grand, says he sh she should have been a good woman, you know, if it had been somebody there to shoot her every minute of her life. This is what he says. So I would, I would say that maybe he's kind of changed his mind about the pleasure of doing bad things. Maybe they both sort of had some kind of moment of grace in this story, you know. Uh, so uh, you might want to consider that, okay. So. Again, back to the, this is one of my favorite lines ever. She would have been a good woman if it had been somebody there to kill her, to shoot her every minute of her life. But this is an important line. He realizes that his violent acts are what it took for the grandmother to be the best Christian woman she could be because, her act, because of her act of forgiveness uh, towards the misfit. So I think that's all I've got about this. And uh, I, again, I'll post this, just hard copy document along with the video. Um, so this should help you as you move forward with this, uh, um, this paper that you have to write, the good project. So if you have any questions, again, feel free to email me.